I'm late, sorry. <laughs> it's 12.03, nobody's on yet, so that's great. Um, I don't know where everyone in the world is um, or how their day is going, but I am freezing right now. It's really, really cold in um, Nebraska. So hi, Kale. Looks like, uh, yeah, you guys are from Nebraska, so you know what I'm thinking. It's just so pretty out right now, but it's just too cold. So I keep looking out the window and thinking that it's, uh, it's going to be gorgeous and nice. It's not the case. So let me get things organized, give a couple more minutes to people. Hi. I'm so excited to get the DVD. So you'll have to, we'll have to put that on, um, on my Instagram live or my Instagram page. I have in my, uh, the link in my bio has, as I'm going to put all of the people that are speaking with me and that are kind of being my little guest hosts this week. So I'm going to put their contact information. So I will also put a link to the, the DVD, but I think it's sold out right now. It sounds like so, um, yeah, I'm sure I'll love it. But yeah, I think it's I think it's sold out, but they can still, I'm sure, pre-order or I know it's going to be live streamed soon. So um, I'll make sure I share that with everybody. And so all of these people that are watching, hopefully, um, you know, throughout the day today and on my story, um, maybe they can reach out and and uh, and take a peek at it, too. So. Um, OK, perfect. OK, if you want to if you guys want to message me or email me that link then I can include it because I think that would be awesome to be able to right now, especially when everybody's at home, they need something, something good. Hi, Sarah. Um, they need something exciting to, uh, or not exciting, something positive and, and fun and, and different and new. So that'll be great to share with everybody. But, um, okay. So send that to me either by message or by, um, email and I'll get that taken care of. So Okay, today we're just, this is going to be kind of kickstarting our week that we're doing, um, which is kind of an overview of uh, what I like to call organic social media marketing, which basically just means that we are, we're um, creating content and kind of uh, doing things without just throwing money and paying for tons of boosted posts. We want to make sure that there's, we're kind of following the science behind um, posting. So first thing I want to talk about is, is actually defining your brand and defining um, who you are. So I think a lot of people get confused, and I, we did talk about this a little bit last week too, um, but in case you missed it, your brand is not just your logo and it's not just your colors. Like those of you that I've worked with for a long time, I was cracking up this morning looking at some old videos that I had done and looking at my old website, my old colors. I mean, I kind of changed things around quite a bit, um, and I definitely see how I've evolved a little bit. But that's still my brand has still stayed the same. So even though my logo, my, my logo actually did have to change a little bit because when I first started, I was using my handwriting as a logo and it looked very similar to another company. I didn't I didn't think that was very fair to them. So I created my my branded logo that you see now. But even other than that, like the I've kept things pretty consistent in terms of my logo and in terms of my actual voice and my brand. But the colors have changed because that's just who I am and that's what I do. I'm sure like right now I'm in, I like to call it my sixth grade girl phase. So everything is like pink and happy and sparkly and um, I'm sure that'll change again, but my brand will still be the same. Even though my colors will change, it's all about my voice and about my, you know, how I represent myself and what my message is to get out to people. So that's really important and I think that a lot of people miss that. They just think, oh, I've got a logo and this is what I sell and this is who my target is and they kind of forget the whole big picture that they need to be thinking about because it really does come off. Um, it helps with your authenticity. It helps you kind of find those people that truly are like your tribe or your people that want to follow you. If you 100% know exactly who you are, what you want to accomplish, what your like mission is and your voice is, and you know how to make that come across, um, then people obviously are going to want to work with you and going to want to um, you know follow you and engage with you. So that's kind of the biggest thing. And then that definitely leads right into your target audience. And I always tell people to be really careful with this because you might think you know exactly who your target's gonna be and you might be really surprised if you just kinda you know, throw some things out there, you might end up with, yes, a culture is a great word to, for that, Sarah, thank you, yes. It's your, your brand is so much more of your culture. It is, that's, exact, that's a great way to say it. Um, 
But when you're thinking about your, your target audience too and how that culture relates to the, those people, you, you, a lot of people get really confused and think, oh, I, I think I'm selling to this person or I think this is the, these are the people that I'm, I want to be engaged with or that I want to have follow me. Um, and I encourage people to keep their, their mind open because especially, hi, Drea. If you are true to yourself, and hi, Robin. <laughs> um, if you're true to yourself, then you are definitely going to, that's gonna resonate with people and they are going to want to, want to be a part of what you're doing. So you, you need to keep your eyes open. I'm sorry, I totally just got distracted. Complete gen moment, I apologize. Um, but you're, you wanna make sure that you, like I've had a business before that 100% thought that she was, she knew her to who her target was. Um, it's actually uh, a float spot here in town that's fantastic, and I would love to do that right now, so bad. But um, she really thought that she was gonna be working a lot with um, people like that were you know, CrossFit athletes or a lot of people with more muscle aches and pains types of things. And after researching more and more about what uh, her, what the float spa does, I'm like, you know, I think you might be missing a whole group of people like with anxiety, depression, PTSD, and she still wasn't sold on it. Ah, no, I think it's really gonna be more for like athletes, but we decided let's just try putting out some different posts with a different type of message behind them and see what gets the most attention. So what, hi, Christopher. Hi, Betsy. Um, what ended up happening was, you know, we put, so she she decided to kind of broaden her horizon in terms of who she was trying to speak to. Threw out some posts that maybe were her, she thought was her intended audience, which would have been the athletes. Um, and those had a very different like look and feel to them. They were more edgy, more obviously like athletic. Then when we tried this new audience, which was the more anxiety, depression, PTSD, we definitely went a different look and a different feel. The imagery was a lot more subtle. We did a lot with like, um, you know, it's okay to not be okay. And those types of quotes and things like that, that really resonated with people. And anytime we posted anything like that, it just like completely shot through the roof um, in terms of her reach. So what she started realizing was, hey, I went into this business thinking I knew exactly who, hi Shally, who my target audience was gonna be and she was really surprised to realize she had this whole other target audience that she hadn't even considered. And to be honest, that ended up being a much bigger audience and a much more engaged audience. So make sure that you're thinking about that. You know, you obviously, you know your voice, you know your brand, and if you don't, then you need to take some really good time to stop and think about exactly what your message is that you're putting across and what your, what culture, as Sarah said, that you want to create. After that's done, then start thinking about the different um, target audiences. So. One of the things that I love to do is, um, and I, I learned this kind of from my B&I group, my networking group that I used to be in, was called um, LCDs, so Least Common Denominators. And basically what that was, was, you know, we had to stand up in our B&I group and give a, a quick, like, 30-second commercial, and it was always overwhelming. And I felt like everyone, what they kind of explained it that everyone is, we're used to saying like, oh, I'm a website designer and, or, oh, I'm a Squarespace expert, or you kind of have your broad statement that you put out. But if you really want action and you really want engagement, you need to be super specific. So rather than me standing up and saying, you know, oh, I'm a website designer and I build Squarespace websites and I help people with training. Instead, I should stand up and say, you know, this week I'm really looking for anyone who is in the pet industry because I'd really like to make a pet website. Um, and so if you know anyone in this industry, please refer me. So you get really specific. So what LCDs are, they're basically least common denominators. Sit down today and write down everything about your business or your organization or your persona or whatever it is that you're um, getting people engaged with. But that my battery is low. Um, that was great planning on my part. Hi, Kath. Okay, so basically sit down, get a piece of paper, write down all of the everything that you do with your for your like that you kind of have to offer, whether it's a service, whether it's um, you know friendship, I mean anything at all. Write down every single thing that you do or that you sell and then write down also every single person that you could potentially help or potentially connect with and really go out on a limb. I mean, you could really come up with some fantastic things and just a lot broader than you ever potentially thought. And then those little tiny pieces become your theme that we will use in your um, social media marketing.
because really it should be intentional every week. Your social media marketing needs to be intentional, it needs to be consistent, and it should follow a theme because that's how um, to best take advantage of our social media platforms. So in terms of our social media platforms, they're a business. And whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, they're a business, they need us to be engaged, they need us to be on that platform, otherwise they're not successful. So they need to do everything that they can to make sure that they're showing us the content that we that reaches us and that keeps us engaged. So what they do is they're basically with their algorithm, they're constantly tracking and monitoring to see what is reaching us individually. And then when they kind of find some patterns, then that's when they're basically gonna keep showing it um, to us over and over again, because they want us addicted. They want us to be on our phones and keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling until we get that reward of, oh, I like this, or this is interesting. Because you reach something, it stops, it, you stop on something, it reaches you, then you continue to scroll until you find something else. Every time you're doing that, that's a reach, they're taking note of it and they're saying, okay, let's try to show her either that person's content again or similar content and figure out exactly why that reached her because we're gonna, we wanna hit on it so that we're showing her more and more and more of that stuff and she's stuck on our platform all day long. So that's basically the way that, that the, the science works behind social media. So for us to take advantage of that as influencers or business or um, organization, you know, anything, we need to make sure that we're kind of keeping that in mind um, when we're posting. And that's why these themes work really, really well. Because if I show a post, okay, we'll go back to the float spa that I was talking about. So if she, at the beginning of the week, posts um, a that quote that I was saying, like, it's okay to not be okay, and it kind of has some imagery that might evoke some evo emotion um, with that type of a client, then if it reaches someone, they are scrolling through, they see that quote, it stops them for a moment, Facebook takes note of it and it says, okay, wait, we might be on to something. Let's try again the next time that this float spa posts something, let's show it to this person again and see if they, if they stop and pause again a second time. So if a couple of days later she posts another post and it has something else to do with maybe anxiety or depression and it doesn't have to be something that she created, it could be a curated link from somewhere else, an expert like Psychology Today, or it could be even something about the benefits of floating or anything along those lines. Um, if she continues to fill the week with posts that would also reach that intended audience, then more likely, more than likely, they're gonna stop, take a peek at it, it's gonna reach them again, Facebook or Instagram or whoever it is is gonna keep thinking, oh wow, she definitely is onto something, we're onto something, we're gonna keep showing this person's post to her over and over and over again. By the end of the week, then you could actually kind of do more of a direct post. So there's always an 80-20 rule in social media marketing. You should not be directly selling all the time. You should be also spending about 80% of the time sending, putting out content that is valuable, interesting, um, either funny or you know teaches them something, educates 80% um, of the time. But then at the end of the week, you could then kind of say, in her case, hey, did you know that floating directly helps with anxiety, depression, PTSD? Um, we have a special going on this week, you know, use the code STRESSFREE to get 20% off your first float or something like that. So that can be an actual direct uh, post. So if you kind of see how that's the way, if you're consistent about it and you stick with these themes, it really will help kind of guide people along. It seems really manipulative and that's it's, it's difficult. It was really difficult for me when I first started kind of playing around with this because I don't want to manipulate anyone, but like Sarah um, Boyce and I were talking about last week, I mean, that's the way marketing is. It's been around for ever and ever and ever. And I believe that at least the people that I work with all have pretty good hearts and have great, uh, you know, plans and are, are doing great things in the world. So I know that I'm really particular about the people that I work with and helping them kind of further their business so I can sleep well at night, I guess. But, um, but it's, so it is a tiny bit manipulative, but if you're, if you're doing it for the right reasons, I mean, it's, it's a way to help someone, especially in the case of the float spa, you know, she, maybe she is kind of working a little bit on the emotional side of things, but it's definitely helping these people, um, you know, be better versions of themselves. So that's my take on it. 
So that's kind of what this week is going to be about. Um, basically, today would be a great day for you to spend kind of reevaluating your voice, your vision, what your brand is, what your culture is, what message you want to get out there, going through and kind of determining by doing those LCDs what your target audiences are, what you have to offer, what some of the themes can be for that for these weeks that you have coming up. And then tomorrow we're going to be talking a little bit about um, more about Instagram, and I'm super excited about that. Um, so Sarah is, I believe, still on here. Um, Sarah Boyce. We are going to be talking about Instagram. We did last week, and we actually got cut off by by Instagram because we were talking for too long. So they shut us down. Um, but she's been teaching me a lot. Uh, I am excited to kind of further my businesses and organizations with um, Instagram. So we're going to talk all things Instagram tomorrow. Wednesday, Drea will be on with me. I think she's on here as well right now. Um, and we are going to talk on Wednesday about content creation. So again, like Canva, um, all kinds of other program programs and apps that we can use to actually create our own engaging content because that's what we have to do is make sure that we're consistently putting out content that reaches people and that's quality content. We're not just throwing something out there. Um, on Thursday, I'll be with Emma and Noah again, and we're going to be talking about Facebook and content curation, which means that we can basically use other people's content that's good quality content and not always have to uh, reinvent the wheel. Um, and then on Friday, Kath and I will be back together and we're actually gonna use the Fempreneur Fair, um, which is a, a really neat thing if you guys haven't heard about it um, before. Kath and I started it uh, here in Omaha. Um, but we're gonna be using that as our kind of our for the whole week. We're basically going to be kind of following along with this program with you guys and doing each of these steps so that we can on Friday share with you how it looks, what we've done, and kind of put it all into place for you so that you can see how that comes together, how we track data and analytics to make really good decisions about marketing in the future and decide when to boost. Because the whole point of organic social media marketing is that you once you know what you're doing, why you're doing it, who you're doing it for, you can put out good quality content, reach them consistently, and then you can continue to, um, if you've done it organically, then you can pay for things and kind of you know, uh, take advantage of some of the, the features that these platforms have. But it makes no sense to be throwing money at these platforms when you don't have a plan of action to kind of get you where you need to be. So hope that makes sense. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, Obviously, if you have any questions, you can reach out at any time. Um, the link in my bio actually has, uh, it's, it takes you straight to my Instagram landing page on my website. And there um, are quite a few different things on there. There's a, like a little template that we use. There's the do's and don'ts of social media marketing. There's kind of an overview that talks about like how you should start today, like um, what the LCDs and what the steps are to begin a social media marketing plan. And then there's actually like a whole, I think like 60 videos. If you really just want to sit and listen to me today, you can watch all a bunch of videos about social media marketing. So, um, okay, you guys stay safe out there. We'll be back tomorrow. Sarah and I will be on at noon tomorrow, Central Standard Time. So hopefully we'll get to see some of you guys here and take care of you and yours. We'll talk later. Bye-bye.